Welcome to another stair building education series. Let's go ahead and jump right into it with our first video. In this video, I am going to provide you with a couple of examples that could affect the length and layout of your stair stringers. If you have a framing square that is bent and no longer square, and this can actually affect the length of the stair stringer, as well as creating steps that might not be perfectly level or risers that won't be perfectly plumb or vertically level. So let's go ahead and get started with an example of a couple of layout lines that are going to be perfectly square and of course will look something like this and if you notice I went ahead and separated the framing square so that you can get an idea in which direction it is going to be bent and of course you can see where this one here is bent outward whereas the next example is bent inward and of course framing squares are often bent by misusing them or dropping them and believe it or not sometimes they come from the factory bent so you might want to check all of your framing squares before before you start using them and of course I do have a video that I just made and I will put a link here for you to check that out so let's go ahead and take a look at our first example where the square is perfectly square and we're going to use nine steps for each one of the examples however you're going to notice the length of of the stringer change as we lay out the stringer so in our next example we're going to use the framing square that is bent inward and as you guessed it this will create a shorter stringer so let's go ahead and remove the framing square and take a look at our square lines here so this one here is the square line and the line on the other side would represent the line used with the framing square that would be bent inward and as we lay that out with our framing square we're going to end up with something like this and by now you can probably figure out that if we're going to use a framing square that is bent outward that the stair stringer is going to be a little longer however before we lay that out let's just go ahead and take a look at our lines and of course the line on the inside here represents the square line created by these square framing square and the line on the other side represents the line from the bent framing square and as we lay out our stringer we're going to end up with something like this and hopefully this never happens to you but if you are having a problem with laying out your stringers while using precise and exact measurements on your framing square and you're ending up with stringers that are a little too long or a little short, then the first thing I would suggest doing would be to check the framing square to make sure that it isn't going to be the problem. In this video, I am going to show you what a framing square looks like when it is no longer square and provide you with a couple of ways you can check your framing square to see if it's square. Now, there are a couple of methods, but I think this one here works the best, and that would be to grab a sheet of plywood or something that you know is square and then create some lines that are going to be square. And a lot of times you can do that by just simply measuring in at least two feet or the length of the framing square. And of course that could be either side. And then measuring over two feet or three feet to create a straight line that is going to be perpendicular to the other line. So not too difficult. You just need something that is square. And then the next step would be obvious. You just simply line the square up with the edges. And then the next Next part would be obvious you're simply going to line the square up with the lines that you have created on the plywood and then examine these lines closely because if it's off just a little bit then you might have a problem so again not too difficult we're going to line the edge of the framing square up with the lines we created on the board or the plywood. And if the framing square and the lines line up, then the framing square would be square. However, if the framing square is out of square, then it might look something like this. And keep in mind that it can be bent in either direction on this side of the line or on this side of the line. And you can actually try to re-bend them back into shape. However, I haven't had good luck with that, um, but again, it's worth trying. 
Now the next part of the video here will provide you with an additional method to check your lines to make sure that they are square. And that can be done with the 3, 4, 5 rule. So that would be 3 on one side, 4 on this side, and 5 on this side. And in case you're wondering why these measurements are like this, I simply multiplied the 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15, 4 times 5 is 20, and 5 times 5 is 25. And I will put a link here in the video to another video that I already made if you're looking for more information about this. Next up, let's take a look at a method that I've used myself and I've seen other carpenters use. And that would be to grab a straight edge and two framing squares and simply position them something like this. And if there is absolutely no gap between the framing squares at the bottom or the top or this section or this section, then there's a good chance that your framing squares are going to be square. However, I need to point out that you could have a couple of framing squares that were bent in the opposite direction. And to figure that out, all you would need to do is take this one here and flip it over so that it it is in this direction and then take this framing square here and flip it over so that it is in this direction and then reline them up and if you don't have any gaps then you're probably going to have a square square and of course I couldn't end the video without providing you with an example of a square or two squares that might not be square. Again, this is not my preferred method because you could have a square that is square and one that is not, and then how would you figure out which one is or isn't square? Which leads me back to my original method that I suggested would work better than something like this. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I've seen a lot of carpenters use it. However, as always, use whichever you feel feel is going to work best. In this video, I am going to show you what will happen to a stair stringer if you have a framing square that is bent or is not square. Now, I will also be putting a link to a video about how you can check a framing square to see if it is still square or if it is out of square. And of course, the stringer layout here will be the result of a framing square that is bent slightly in four different directions. So let's Let's go ahead and try to explain what I'm talking about for those of you who are thoroughly confused by now in hopes of making more sense about what I'm trying to explain. So let's go ahead and get started with our first example which will provide us with a rectangle with four 90 degree angles and would have been laid out with a framing square that was perfectly square. So again, four 90 degree angles, seven and a half inch riser, 11 inch wide tread. So this stringer right here will be laid out correctly. However, the other four will be laid out with a framing square that would have been bent in one direction here and then two other directions here. So we have two different riser heights and two different tread lengths with different angles. So in this example here, we have a tread that is going to be the same and two 90 degree angles and then two angles that would not be 90 degrees. And in the next example, we will simply reverse the directions, providing us with 90 degrees on this side and then angles over here that aren't gonna be 90 degrees. And we'll just be slightly off because I'm just using an eighth of an inch here. And in most cases, it's going to be difficult. You're going to have to have a framing square that's going to be pretty beat up to provide these measurements here. And in our next example, we have 90 degree angles here. And then on the other side, at the top, we have 11 inches. We wouldn't have a 90 degree angle here, but we're going to add an eighth of an inch to the front of the bottom here. And then, of course, we are going to deduct an eighth of an inch on this one here. Again, Again, leaving us with two 90 degree angles on this side and angles here that would not be at the top or the bottom on this side, which will provide us with one stair stringer that is going to be laid out with the perfect framing square and four others that will not be. 
So let's go ahead and look at our first example here where we are going to use this one here, the stair stringer that is perfect, and then this one here that is off a little at the bottom. And as you can see, we are going to be losing a little bit and then ending up with a situation where the stair stringer is going to be a little shorter than it should have been. In our next example, we will take take this one here where it's a little longer on the bottom and of course this will provide us with the opposite effect making the stair stringer a little longer however you can see that the treads and the risers aren't that much out of level or plumb here and might not be noticeable in most cases however a situation like this would be noticeable if you were working in tight spaces because it is going to be seven eighths of an inch larger, all because you're working with a bent framing square. So in our next example here, we are going to change the riser height. And in this situation here, we are not going to end up with steps that are going to be perfectly level. We're actually going to have a slight variation here. However, we're not going to have much of a variation in the overall length. And the stringer that will provide us with the closest example to this one here that you're going to find out of the four different stringer layouts. Now in our last example we are going to be reversing the slope here and this is going to provide us with another problem because the stringer length is going to be smaller. However it looks like the treads and risers aren't going to be that much out of whack for level and plumb and we're also going to end up with about 9 sixteenths of an inch at the top difference instead of the seven eighths of an inch we were dealing with in the first two examples. And hopefully this makes sense. And uh, I have ran into this problem before. I had an older framing square that was bent and probably a framing square that was a gift uh, from my father, from his father, and so on. Who knows how far back this thing went. But it wasn't until I got a new framing square that I realized I had solved my problem. And it wasn't until I created this video that I got to see for myself what was actually going on, which of course led to the creation of this video and sharing my knowledge with some of the problems I've had in the past as a stair builder. And hopefully you don't have to go through any of this because you just learned one of the problems you could run into if you have stair stringer lengths that are a little shorter or a little longer. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos on YouTube. And if you can't find the videos on YouTube, make sure that you visit our website to find a complete organized list of all of the videos we've made so far.